No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm here with Mark Holdsworth, who runs the uh, narrowboat sessions, and amongst a, a crew of about five or six of you all together. There's different people helping me throughout the year. It's mainly to help move the boat. I tend to do all the technical stuff and the recording. Yes. Um, with the exception of Catherine, who does help me on the desk, because she's got nice young ears. <laughs> the bin is in September. Catherine's gone back to college, you see. So all right. Uh, yeah, I'm on my own at the moment. <laughs> so, I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll manage. Yeah. This is the thing. Yeah. One of the things is, I, I mean, this isn't strictly just a fork um, kind of no, session. Uh, I suppose it started that way. but It did. It's that, well, we started um, right up in Hebden Bridge, which is heart of folk country, you see. So uh, everybody that came to us, well, we, because I was completely unknown in the music world, because I've only ever played backline for people, we were having difficulty getting people to come aboard. So uh, fortunately, we managed to persuade um, Steve Tilston and Maggie Boyle, who had been Maggie Tilston, uh, to come and do a session for us. Uh, very sadly, Maggie was terminally ill at the time, and um, I think she did it purely because we were trying to raise money for cancer research but as well as that we were creating a platform for unsigned music and aspiring musicians which is something that was really dear to our heart mm. so anyway uh, we they very kindly came and did um, a session for us and it gave us the kudos we needed but the lovely thing that Maggie did was um, after she'd gone home, she'd asked me how many sessions we had booked, and I said, "Well, this is why we've asked you and Steve to come and do it because we haven't. You know, yeah. We had three sessions booked in mm. two months. It was, it was dying a death. Anyway, the next morning the phone started to ring, and it just kept ringing for days afterwards. And uh, what Maggie had done was, when she'd got home, she'd got out her address book, and she'd gone through everybody she could think of within a hundred mile radius, mm. and phoned them and said, "Get your butts down there." And do right. It. And so, it was. It was lovely because, um, in say, in the first year we just did 67 sessions. The second year we did. <laughs> I, I love the fact that you said just, just, just 67. Just 67. And it's 120 yeah. now? We limit it to 120. This but that's year, 120 days, isn't it? We're, no, 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 no. That's 120 sessions. All right. I was going okay. to say, like, 120 no. days would be. Yeah, no, it's 120 sessions. So, like today, we're doing five sessions today. Mm. Um, so. When we're, when we're out on the move, we just do one session every evening, unless we stop somewhere for a few days, and then we do a few in the afternoon and have the evenings off, you see. Um, but we start off in North Wales every year, and we do the bulk of the recordings there. About a third to half of them are done there, for the simple reason that people that are coming from abroad can get to the nearest airport and catch a train, which is only four <laughs> minutes from where, the, uh, from, from where the boat is. I love the idea of like boats and planes and trains. Yes, yes, trains. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, but yes, I mean we've had people from Australia and Canada and America, all across Europe. Um, there was a sudden panic last year with the Brexit thing. Had lots and lots of European bands coming across to do it in case they couldn't get visas. How, how does that make you feel when when people are sort of desperate to get here, like pre-Brexit, and because your your kudos is certainly raised? Yeah, it's it's completely bonkers. It really is. I think. I know um, that we are now the, the biggest platform for unsigned music in the UK, but the reason for that is that I don't think anybody else is doing it, not not on this sort of scale. Certainly not on this sort of scale. I, no. I mean, I've heard of places like the Jam Shed, which is in Northumberland. That's and right, yes. And um, sort of cooking in the kitchen and uh, places the, like that. The thing is, they, they welcome signed artists as well, whereas we don't. We don't mm. have signed artists. This is purely for people that need to exposure, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that this exposure thing can be a bit of a dirty word because a lot of pubs will say, oh yes, you can come and play for us for free and, and uh, it'll give you some exposure. You don't get exposure in a pub. You mm -hmm. get the locals sitting, talking and drinking mm -hmm. and not listening to your music. The difference with this is, this is worldwide. So yes. you actually do get exposure, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, um, we had, as you know, the Merry Hell Band on board last year. And they had 143,000 views in mm. a week. It was just bonkers. You, you must be, so, I mean, as I've looked at the things that you've posted, I mean, an average, a very low average is in like the two to 3,000 mark. Yes, that's right. And if you've got 120 sessions, then that's, that's like nearly a quarter of a million people looking at the, the All people. The same, and yes. One of the things you haven't mentioned is exactly when did you start doing this? Oh, 2014. started in right. 2014, yes. Um, and so this is our fifth year, and we're just planning the sixth year now, trying to decide which way to go. 
All right. Uh, so, so that you can find p people that you haven't. It, it's because closest proximity to a. Yes, well, it's it's an excuse for giving us a canal holiday as well. You know, so it gives <laughs> us. It actually gives us a reason for taking the boat out. Mm. I mean, we could quite easily just stay in North Wales, and we could mm. still fill the sessions. Um, the session, the hundred and twenty sessions, are usually pretty much booked up. Uh, we open the, the diaries at Easter, and they're usually booked up by June. Mm. So um, we then. We, we leave it open for people, we make a note of where the people are and then if they're sort of local to us or they can they don't mind travelling, if anybody falls out, I think your session was what, you filled a session didn't you, that somebody had dropped out from? Oh, I don't know, I just, uh, oh, certainly yeah. ever the chancer, I, I just got in touch and said <laughs> I, I'd like to take part in this. That's, oh was it Helen, It was yes, you, you're a friend of Helen's at a... Um, is it just a, a magazine or something? And she'd no, I, I think I think I'm getting you confused with somebody else. Then, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm you? the other Tony Wilson. <laughs> the other Tony Wilson. Yeah. Well, it's, but, it's, I, but I think it was the positivity that, that I got from right. the from the write ups. The, the fact that you're obviously a fan, yeah. a fan of music. Yeah. Could, could I just ask you, with all these instruments about, do you play yourself? I, well, I do. You said you um, played backline, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm a classically trained concert pianist originally. All right. Um, but I went to the dark side in my late teens after my friend Bob Walton <laughs> introduced me to oh, folk yes. clubs, you know, and uh, yeah, I've just, and I've just met some wonderful people along the way. But um, yeah, because I could uh, sight read, I could play for people without ever having seen their music or heard their music. Before. All right. So yeah, it was just um, yeah. so you you were almost as a session musician. Yes, quite yes, often. Yeah, that's right. And then yeah. pick up bands. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd play with um, all sorts of different bands and things. Yeah, people would say, "Oh, I need a keyboard player for this and a keyboard right. player for that." And uh, yeah, and from classical to folk, and presumably you played in all of those different kind of genres. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. So well, what, what was the weirdest, weirdest one uh, where oh, somebody weird. sort of expected you to play something that you'd never really tried before? Well, I haven't really had anything weird. Um, no. Not that I consider weird. I think I, I probably lead quite a weird life. Um, no, it's, it's not, I, honestly, there's never been yeah. anything that weird, you know. It's, yeah. um, You're so uh, modest. You're so <laughs> modest in the fact that you can read, which which is something that a, a lot of folk it, or um, in, in, indie people certainly wouldn't go. No, exactly. I, f I was quite amazed when I first, was first introduced to folk music that nobody at the folk club could read music you mm. know I mean in fairness I've only just started learning tab on guitar mm. and I've been playing chords for years and years mm. and years you know um, but I've only just started uh, sight reading tab mm. um, which you know it's completely alien to me because of course I yeah. can read treble and bass staves you know and just go yeah okay well, I can play that <laughs> but most people now don't write write on proper what I call proper music anymore yeah except in the classical world where everybody does yes yeah know? and that that was the huge difference there's no improvisation in the classical world you know, right you, you learn a piece so something like the Greek piano concerto can take you I don't know three months at six hours a day to get mm. get it pretty close you know <laughs> and um, and yet so the, the improvisation I love it now that I can turn up and begin <clears throat> with something you know and I can join in even mm. if I've never heard it before yeah. it's just good fun I have come across this with with classically trained like musicians yeah uh, and the, the the seems at first aghast you know that you, you, you don't know this piece and you don't have the music and then you say well yeah. that's kind of the way that it is uh, yeah. and I'm much more I, I suppose as I've got older more used to having to improvise yes. you know I, yeah. I mean I always used to like to and uh, not maybe like six months out 24 hours a day to, so you get like yeah. the Greek piano concerto right but at least um, I would know exactly how it was going. Yes, yeah, I did. I mean, I was at first. I, I just, what the hell are these guys doing? And then I sort of sat and listened to it. I thought, well, hold on, yeah, they, they're sort of going, I think that's a G, C, F, or yeah. maybe a B flat, maybe a B minor, something like that, you know. And I just thought, well, that's just four chords. Any fool can do that. So yeah. I, I was joining in, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it, yeah. And then, of course, once you got used to what they're doing, you can kind yeah. of start embellishing a bit, you know. It is that thing, <laughs> yeah. and it, but it is that sort of leap of faith. So, like, well, I don't know this, but I'm going to have a good go at it. And that's right. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it took me a while before I started yeah. into, uh, jamming, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you really started with this kind of folk attitude, but now you just 
ask anybody or accept anybody. Well, I, I was introduced to an alternative to classical music with folk. Yeah. Um, I had actually always liked um, heavy rock as well, yeah. you know, being a teenager in the days, the early days of Led Zeppelin. You know, yeah. they were sort of my rock gods and I'd listened to the music and I really enjoyed it but of course I never played it mm -hmm. and then it wasn't until I got introduced to folk music and I started um, altering, I got criticised quite heavily in the late 70s for taking nice folk pieces and turning them into folk rock and things like that but we, you know it did it did well. How, how things change. Oh yes indeed. <laughs> you know, I, I mean I did play alongside a uh, um, a, a classically trained saxophonist yeah. who used one of those electronic wind instruments Yes, and we had a very classical bias and what I hear now you know, this, this is with Mick Roberts, what I hear now is what we were doing 23 years ago. Yes, I was saying this the other day, you know, so, so what's new, you know, mm. but um, of course the thing is if you do it too, if you do it before it's time it's not appreciated, mm. you know, it's like many things. Uh, but, but the album itself still stands the test of time mm. and I, I was very pleased that we did it. It was a shame that nobody would book us, you know, <laughs> yes. but the reaction was yeah. that's not just that it was different, but it was it was very enjoyable. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, right. but but these things. So, you must. How how do you feel about this 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 fact that you know you've you've started off so humbly, you know, like trying to get people, and now everybody's desperate desperate to come here. Uh, and, and what do you see for the future of the narrowboard sessions? Well, it was originally my fear that we would run out of people, <laughs> and um, it's I, I, I still worry that one day we'll run out of musicians. But mm. with, I don't think it. Yeah, I, yeah I'm kind of hoping it'll never happen. But mm. um, we do allow people to come back, but never the same lineup. For instance, if so, if you come this, you know, like mm. you're doing a session yourself. Um, if you want to come and do it again, you'll have to bring somebody else with you to play with. You, <laughs> I love the clone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Have yourself cloned. So um, you, you know, you, you can play your guitar, and somebody else plays a cajon or a yeah. bass guitar. It's a different lineup. It's very right. different, you see. So I think on in having started allowing people to do a second set on that mm. basis. I don't think, in truth, we ever will run out because everybody enjoys what we do. Of course yeah. they do. And uh, well, there's, there's nothing not to enjoy about it. I know I do constantly police the Narrowboat Session site, but in fairness, we've only, in five years, we've only had a problem with three, I think the term is trolls, that Ooh. start effing and jeffing on, you know, so oh, what, like, right. you know, and that sort of thing. So I just ban them instantly, gone, done. Yes. Uh, uh, but three out of the, what, well, how many, if, if, about 19,000 followers, I think. Yeah, yeah, you got about, yeah, I think it's near 20,000 now, but, um, but if you think it's like a quarter of a million hits per year for five years, that's, that's a yes. lot of people. That's right, you know, yeah. So. I've only ever had to stop one session, um, you think of the thousand odd sessions we've mm. done, um, but I won't go into that, it was just a, a very nasty person that you know he was just um refu refused to play games yeah you know, to, to play the game you know and uh, so i asked push, him to leave the boat push <laughs> you've yeah. got to tell me the story of that after yeah uh, yeah off, <laughs> off camera but, uh, yeah, a bit, but um yes i, I yeah the, the, the lad has a had a problem Mm. But, uh, never mind. All right, that's cut down to fifty percent. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we could run. We could run. So, like, are they tall? Are they short? Do they got black hair? <laughs> Do they have a beard? Do they wear glasses? Oh no, sorry, that's quite a lot of people on the phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I just say it's just been an absolute pleasure to meet you, and the atmosphere on this on this board is just fantastic. It's chill, isn't it? It, it is, is very it. chill. I'll, ju I'll just say a quick something about the boat because yeah. there's a lot of people. Say, oh, I can do that on my boat. Yeah. You can't. Right, yeah. unless you own one of these, because as you can hear, right, if I do that, there's no bounce. Yeah. The sound is absolutely pure, and the mm. reason for that is because of this flappy old canvas front. It doesn't bounce sound at all. We've got a, mm. a sleeping bag stuffed in the ceiling to really deaden the sound completely, so if it rains, yeah. it damps it down. But a lot of people have tried to do sessions in normal boats, mm. and as you can see, it's completely slab sided with a clean roof. Mm. Impossible to record properly in there. Mm. It, the sound is dreadful. Mm. I know I've tried it, I've tried mm. all sorts to do it in there. In here, um, it's just completely flat, dead sound with yes. no reverb, no hiss, no hum. And of course, we're using. Um, I think Noah used it originally, but that's the recording studio off his arc, and it's 12 volts, so it runs off the solar panels, because it's DC, there's no mains hit.